Hello everyone, I am going to complete lecture A26 which is now the non-parametric tests. All the work that we did thus far has been on parametric tests and we move along now to non-parametric tests and the difference between the parametric and the non-parametric is the distribution assumptions. So remember when we did the t-test we assumed a malady in the data and in this case with non-parametric we don't make those certain assumptions of the data. So there's a one sample problem where we do a sign test uh, and a sign test is just one, one test of a non-parametric test and there's a one sample problem and there's one with matched pairs. So the one sample problem sign test is the quickest and simplest method and in this case we're testing samples from the same population. In the sign test we are testing the hypothesis on the median rather than the mean mu. So we have the median which is denoted as m and we, we know the mean is denoted as mu. The general steps of the hypothesis testing can still be followed. So we, we're going to do the, the five steps again and it's the hypothesis as step one where we state the null hypothesis so the null hypothesis is m is equal to m naught which is some specified value that that's given in the question or we can say p is equal to a half so both these things are the same thing and then we have the alternative hypothesis where we have m is not equal to m naught and we know that as a two-tailed test again if p is equal not equal to a half or we have the upper one tail test where m is greater than m naught or p is greater than a half. Okay, then we have the lower one tail test which is now the less than sign for m is less than m naught or p is less than a half and we specify the level of significance alpha. For this course, we will only consider the upper tail and the two tail test. So you don't have to worry about the lower tail test. And then we have the rejection criteria in step two. Remember for a two-sided test, we have the absolute value of the test statistic should be greater than Z alpha over two. So we're going to use the Z test. And for a, for a one-sided upper tail test, we have uh, the rejection criterion to be Z test statistic greater than Z alpha for us to reject H naught. Then we have the test statistic. And we're going to use the data provided to record certain signs from the data using our M0. So if an observation is greater than M0, if the data is greater than M0, we record that observation as a plus. If the observation is less than M0, we record that as a negative. If the observation is equal to M0, we're going to ignore completely that observation. So we're going to obtain a value N and n is going to be n plus um, so the number of positive the number of observations with a positive sign plus n negative which is the number of observations with a negative sign and we obtain p so p is a half it's always always a half so you're not going to have anything different this is because the population is assumed to be symmetrical and the distribution is assumed to be binomial with equal chances of positive and negative outcomes. So if we have p is equal to a half, then q should also equal to a half, which is just 1 minus p, as in the binomial distribution. Then we're going to calculate something called the r, and if we let r to be the number of positives or the number of negatives, then under the null hypothesis underlying the distribution is the binomial distribution with parameters n and a half. Then we say that R is binomially distributed with the parameters n and p equals to half. And in the calculation of the test statistic, we will use the normal approximation to the binomial distribution. So then we can say that R is normally distributed with np. So np is the mean, mu. np1 minus p is now the variance. So we know p is equal to half. So then therefore, the mean should be n over 2 and the variance should be n over 4 and you'll see how we do this use this in the example and this is important so for a two-sided hypothesis we consider r to be the minimum of n plus and n negative so we're going to get those values of n plus and n negative and we're going to calculate the value of r so if it's a two-sided we say r is the minimum of n plus and n negative and if it's for one-sided upper tail test we consider the number of positives so r will just equal to n plus 
then we apply something called the continuity correction and for one tail te hypothesis test we have r probability of r greater or equal to r small r which is equal to the probability of r just greater not equal to r minus a half so for one tail just remember that it's a greater sign and there's a negative over there for a two tail it's now the less than or equal sign and there's a plus sign so we're going to add a half for two tail and we're going to subtract a half for one tail then we calculate the test statistic now the test statistic is going to be z which is going to be r which we're going to calculate from there so r plus or minus so plus if it's a two tail minus if it's a one tail upper plus the half uh, less and the, the mean which is mu which is n over 2 that we calculated before divided by sigma which is the square root of n over 4 and then we make our decision if the the test statistic is the absolute value of the test statistic is greater than my critical value I'm going to reject H naught if it's a one-sided upper tail test I have that rejection criteria so it's the same thing that we did in lecture a 16 where we have the same rule of thumb for the rejection criterion then we make our conclusion and our conclusions are based on now our decision so we're going to do this example which is in your notes um, to apply the sign test uh, and the question is as follows a questionnaire used in an assessment is thought to give a median score of 50 in a group doing a particular course when tried out on 20 students of another course it gave the scores those following scores okay test the hypothesis that the median is not 50 at the 5% significance level so let's have a look at that question example one and the first step is obviously to state the hypothesis so we know this already state the hypothesis and remember it's a sign test it's a sign test so the sign test is to do with the medians so h naught would be m is equal to 50 right that's why we're testing versus the alternative that m is not equal to 50. okay and what do we know that alpha is five percent so and it's a two-sided test so we have two-sided so it's alpha over two so it's 0, 0.025 okay and that's my first step my second step is my rejection criterion so rejection criterion for a two-sided test is reject h naught reject h naught if my z absolute value of z remember that absolute value when it's a two-sided test is greater than z alpha over 2 which is equal to 1 comma 9 6 okay so that is my first two steps now I come to my third step which is my test statistic so test statistic and I like to group the test statistic because there's a lot of steps in the test statistic into four so let's go for the first step so the first step is to calculate those things that we have already so n plus and n negative so here we're going to calculate how many observations were greater than 50 and how many observations were less than 50 so we go back here if you want to calculate the observations less than 50 we have 1 2 3 4 5 remember we ignore that one 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so n plus or n negative is going to be 12 and plus which is the number of observations greater than 50 which is 1 2 3 4 remember we ignore that one 5 6 7 so there were 7 of them so notice that the total year is 19 but we only had 20 observations so I'm going to have n is equal to n plus plus 
and negative which is 19. Okay, so that's one thing we're going to calculate and then let's just state P. So P is equal to a half and P and Q sorry, and Q is also equal to a half. Okay, then we need to calculate something called R. So R is going to be the minimum of N plus and N negative, right? So it's going to be the minimum of N plus, which is 7 and 12. And the minimum of these two is 7. Okay, now this is something to note. Why did I choose this one here? Because it's a two-sided test. If it was a one-sided upper tail test, it's just going to be, R is just going to be N plus, okay? And you'll see it in the next example. So I like to call this, I like to call this um, the first part, okay, of that. And then we can do the second part. So the second part is then doing the normal approximation. So R, we said, is normally ex distributed with N, P, N, P, Q, right? Which is also just R, N. Now, N was 19, which we calculate, not 20, 19, because we ignored that one observation. So it's 19 times 0 0.5 and 19 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 with it. Okay, that means that R is normally that means that R is normally distributed with nine and a half nine and a half and four comma seven five so what does that mean that means let's take another color over there that means that this is the mu and this is the sigma squared okay so these values are that and that value is that and we're going to use that and you'll see how. So if I make this then uh, step two, this is two things. So we're gonna do in total four things. Okay, okay. So the third thing to do then is to apply, apply the continuity correction. So continuity Correction, and because it's a two-sided test, it's going to be the probability that R is less than small r, right? Which is the probability that R is less than R plus a half. Okay, which is then equal to the probability that R is less than 7.5. Remember what was our R that we calculated? R was 7 that we calculated in the previous step, in the first part. So it's going to be R plus a half, which is going to be 7 and a half. So we have that part. So this step is then as the third thing to do. And then the fourth thing. What last part is just to calculate z. So z is equal to r minus mu over sigma. Okay, from that formula that we had. And r we calculated to be 7.5. And I'm sorry, it's going to be r plus a half here. So it's going to be r plus a half. So it's going to be 7.5 minus mu which we calculated to be nine and a half in the previous step, divided by the square root. Remember, we had sigma squares. We want sigma. So the square root of 4,75, and that equals to negative 0,92.
Okay, and so we have our z value, and that is the final step of the test statistic. So we have the step four. Okay, then the last, the fourth step in our um, hypothesis testing was now the decision. So what are we going to decide? So because we have zero, negative 0, 0,92, we're going to say, remember it was the absolute value of 0, 0,92, the negative, was B less than 1,96. Therefore, we fail to reject. Therefore, we fail to reject H naught. Okay. Number five was our conclusion, and our conclusion is saying at the five percent significance level, so I'll call that we uh, fail to reject H naught, and when we fail to reject H naught, we're saying that H naught is an in inverted commas true, so therefore the median of those scores is equal to 50. And that is example one. Let me come to example two. Okay, so the example two is saying they are following a measurement of breaking strength of a certain kind of two inch cotton ribbon in pounds. So those are the observations that we have. Use the sign test to test the null hypothesis that m is equal to 160 against the alternative that the median is greater than 160 at the 0, 0.0025 level of significance. So it's a 2.5 level of significance. So over here and do example of example 2. Okay, example 2 is again the sign test. So we have the steps again. So our hypothesis, uh, remember H naught, H naught, M is equal to 160 versus H1, M is greater than 160. So this is an upper one tail test and there we see that M is greater than 160 so we have that. Okay. Alpha is uh, 0, 0.025, not 5%, and it's a one-sided test, one-sided upper tail test. Okay, we are not going to consider the lower tail test. So number two, this, uh, step two, we have the rejection criterion. So we say reject H0 if Z, not the absolute value because of the upper tail sign so z is greater than z alpha which is z 0, 0.025 which is still 1,96 so that is my rejection criterion the third step is my test statistic. So we're going to have my test statistic and they remember there were four things to do in the test statistic. So the first one was just to put down n plus and n negative. So how many observations were less than um, 160 and how many observations were greater um, than 160. So if we go back and we see how many observations were greater than 160. So it's one, two, remember we're ignoring that one there, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So n plus is going to be fifteen. And we have to count the number of values less than 160. So we can go back and we see that there were only there should only be four. So there's one over there, two, three, four. So we have n negative as four. 
Okay, then we have to say n is equal to 15 plus 4, which is then equal to 19. So again, we have 19. Then we have p is equal to a half and q. This is always the case. It's always going to be half uh, for p. And then remember for r, it's going to just be not the minimum of n plus and n negative. It's just going to be n plus because it's a one-sided test. So that is going to just be 15. Okay, so just make a note for yourself over there. Because it's a one-sided tail, upper tail test, my R is just going to be N plus. If it was a two-tail test, it's going to be R is equal to the minimum of N plus and N negative. Okay, so that's the first part. Then the second part was R is normally distributed with NP and NPQ. So we've done this, we can go up a little faster. So R is normally distributed with N, which is... 19 times 0, 0,5, uh, comma 19 times 0, 0,5 times 0, 0,5, and then we have R is normally distributed um, with 9,5 as mean, as the mu, and 4,75. So it just happens that these values are the same for this one here. So remember, this one is my mu, and this one here is my sigma squared okay and there we have that so the third part is then to do the probability the continue correct continuity correction which is probability that r big r is greater or equal to small r remember it's a one tail test so it's the greater sign if it was the two tail it would be the less than sign so we have probability that r is greater than r minus a half remember the minus because it's a one tail so then we have it's the probability that r is 15 so r was 15 so it's going to be 14 and a half remember r was 15 we calculated it at the top okay then we can calculate our z now z will be equal to our r less a half so it's going to be that 14 and a half minus mu over sigma so r was then r minus a half is 14 and a half minus mu which we calculated to be nine and a half over the square root of four comma seven five okay remember it's a square root and that will give me um two comma two nine Okay, so since we've calculated our z statistic as 2,29, I can now make my decision number 4. This is my decision. And my decision will be, because 2,29 is greater than 1,96, I therefore reject H0. Okay, and because I've rejected H naught, I can do my conclusion. My conclusion at the five percent or at the two point five percent significance level, I can therefore conclude that the median is greater than one sixty. Okay, and there we've completed example two. Okay, so now we're going to look at the sign test for match pairs where we previously did the sign test for a one sample problem. So the steps that we did in the one sample problem follow very similar to the sign test for the match pairs. So suppose samples are taken for comparison from the same population that are continuous and symmetrical, then we can use the sign test. The key issue to note is that we have P of observations which are related. And this is very similar to the lecture that we did when um, we looked at pair differences and we noticed that it was done on the same person or the same location or the same observation. So it's, it's, a, it's a similar thing. So the general procedure we follow is as follows. We have step one as our hypothesis. And now we look at the median of differences. No longer the median, but the differences of the median. So we're saying the median of differences is equal to zero under the null hypothesis, or you can put p equals to a half. Either way, it will be marked correctly. 
then the alternative hypothesis will be that the medium of differences is not equal to zero or p is not equal to a half for two two tail test if it's the upper one tail it's the greatest sign than zero or the lower tail one tail test less than zero so now you that m naught is such is equal is zero so again we will only consider the upper tail and the two tail hypothesis the rejection criterion in step two is the same for the two-sided hypothesis test and for the one-sided upper tail hypothesis test. The test statistic is going to be the same thing that we did for the one sample. The only difference now is that we're going to calculate differences between the two samples and then label them accordingly. So if the difference, so no longer the observation itself, but the difference between the two samples, if it's greater than zero, we record it as a positive. If the difference is less than zero, then we record it as a negative. If the difference is equal to zero, we ignore that observation again. So we obtain n, and n is now n plus plus n negative, where n plus is the number of differences with a positive sign. So we're going to calculate these differences if they're greater than zero. We calculate that number. We calculate the number of differences with the negative sign. And then we obtain p, which is always a half. And this is because the population is assumed to be symmetrical and the distribution is assumed to be binomial. And then we have q is equal to 1 minus p, which is a half. Then we calculate r as before, and we know this already. So r is binomially distributed with n and a half. And then using the normal approximation to the binomial distribution, r is normally distributed with n over 2 and n over 4. So very similar to, this, to the first one. Again, so we for the two-sided hypothesis test, we have r is the minimum of the n plus and n negative, and the one-sided upper tail hypothesis, we consider the number of positives only. We apply the continuity correction. For a one-tailed, we minus, and it's a greater or equal sign. For a two-tailed uh, two -tailed hypothesis, we add the half, and we have a less than, sign, less than equal to sign. Then we calculate the test statistic, so it's going to be R that we calculate there, plus if it's a two-tail, minus if it's a one-tail, 0, 0,5, minus mu, which is n over 2, divided by the square root of sigma squared, which is n over 4. And then we make a decision based on our rejection criterion and a conclusion based on our decision. So looking at this example, the assessments for nine patients are shown in the table. So you can see that this is a pair differences because each of these nine patients go under two treatments. So treatment A and treatment B are paired under patient one, paired under patient two, up until patient nine. So use the scientist to determine whether the data present sufficient um, evidence to indicate that one of the treatment tends to be consistently more efficient than the others. So when is one, one is more consistently more efficient than the other, we're saying that treatment A is better than treatment B. So let's denote that as YA and YB. So we're saying what is the, the probability of YA, it must be greater than YB, should not equal to half. So we have a two-sided test because now we're saying P, the probability should not be equal to a half and test using alpha 0, 0,05. Okay, so we have um, this example over here. So let's just call it example one. Okay, um, so our first step will be the hypothesis. And the hypothesis is H naught um, m diff now, remember it's m diff, is equal to zero versus the h1 where we say that um, m diff is not equal to zero. Okay, similarly we could have had p is equal to a half or p is equal to not equal to a half. Okay, both of these are the correct, so either one will work. So let's put H naught over there. Right? Because alpha is five percent, alpha was five percent, so we the two sided test. So it's alpha over two, which is now zero comma zero two five. 
Okay, number two, step two, and you guys all, all know this by now. Hopefully, it's reject H naught if the absolute value of Z is greater than Z of over two, which is equal to one comma nine six. Okay. Then the third step to do is the test statistic. So we have the test statistic. And now we're going to use the data from the test statistic. So we have those patients one to nine, right? So we're gonna calculate a difference, right? Of patient one to nine my handwriting is not great um, and we're going to calculate the differences between this now the difference should be between a and b treatment a and b so let's go here so the difference is going to be 36.3 minus 35.1 so that first difference there is going to be 1 comma 2 okay the second patient we're going to have as 1 comma 6 so 1 comma 6 comes from 48 comma 4 less 46 comma 8 and the third patient is going to be 2,9. And this is in your notes. Um, the fourth patient is 4,1. The fifth patient is a negative. So we're going to have negative 0,4. Sixth is 1,8. Seven is 0,8. Uh, 8 is negative 0, 0,1 and ninth patient is going to be have a difference of 0. So this difference here is actually A less B. Okay, now we're going to check what is the sign of all of these. So this is a positive, 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 negative, positive, positive, negative, and we ignore that one there, so we say ignore. Okay, so remember the first part in the test statistic is to calculate that n plus and n negative. So n plus will be the number of positive signs that I have, so 4, 5, 6, so n plus is 6, and negative is going to be 2, right? So then I have n is equal to 8, and I have r is equal to the minimum, because it's a two-sided test, of 2 and 6, which is going to be 2. Okay, and let's just state for the purposes for the later calculations, p is going to be a half, and q is also going to equal to a half. Okay, so that's the first one. Then the second one was that R is normally distributed with NP, NPQ. So we want those that mean and variance. So it's going to be R is normally distributed with N, which is 8. So it's going to be 8 times 0, 0,5. Um, 8 times 0, 0,5 times 0, 0,5. So therefore, we're going to have mu equal to um, 8 times a half is 4, and sigma squared equal to 2. So 8 times a half times a half is 2. Okay. So the third part is then applying the continuity correction. So it's the probability that r is less than or equal to r which is the probability that r is less than r plus a half, which is equal to probability that r is less than 2,5. Remember, r was 2. Okay, then we're going to calculate our z-test statistics. So our z is equal to r um, um, plus a half, minus mu over sigma so r was two and a, so r plus a half is two and a half minus mu which we found to be four over the square root of two 
and that will give me negative 0 comma 1 6 right so step 4 so check that you've done all four steps in the in the test statistic especially for the scientists and so now we come to step 4 in the decision so my decision so because I have a two-sided test I'm going to have an absolute value is less than 1 comma 9 6 therefore I fail to reject H naught. Okay, and then I can state my conclusion. My conclusion would be at the 5% significance level, the two methods are equally the same. So uh, treatment A and B are equally the same. Okay, and this full conclusion is in your notes. And that is uh, the first example um, for match pairs. Okay, so now we come to the second example um, and in for match pairs. And the example is as follows. So 40, le 40 leaves were used in a fungicide experiment, one surface of each limb being coated with a standard non-absorbent uh, fungicide, and after weeks exposure to infection, the leaves were assessed as coated surface cleaner, no difference, or coated surface more infected. The number in these categories were 28, 8, and 4 respectively. Test where the fungicide is effective at the 10% alpha significance level. Okay, so here you can already see that they've given us the values for N plus, um, N plus, uh, N negative, and where we have to ignore those certain observations. So we want to test where the fungicide is effective. We're going to say now P is greater than a half. So let's go back here. Okay, so the this is then example two of the match pairs. So example two of the match pairs, we state our hypothesis. Okay, H naught, P is equal to a half versus uh, H1, where P is now greater than a half. Remember, we're testing whether the fungicide was effective or not. So this is a one-sided test. Alpha was 10%. Step two was reject H naught if my Z test statistic is greater than my critical value, which is alpha, which is 0, 0,1, 0, 0,1, and that is equal to 1,28. So if you get that from the tables, then we come to the third step, to step, step three, which is the test statistic. So the test statistic, we needed to calculate n plus, n negative, and find those values. Now, if you go to the question, it says that the leaves that showed coated surface was cleaner were 28, 8 made no difference, and the coated surface more infected was 4. So we can already see that there were 28 with a positive and um, 4 that were negative. So n is then equal to 28 plus 4 equals to 32. Remember we ignore that 8, so ignore 8. Okay, and then the second thing we needed to do in this step was just to um, find what is R. Now R is, because it's a one-sided test, it's going to be the number of positives, which is just going to be 28. And then we um, state P is equal to a half. It's always this Q is equal to a half. Okay, then the second, second thing we need to do is find the distribution of R, which is NP and pq so it's going to be r is normally distributed with n which is 32 so it's 32 times 0 comma 5 and 32 times 0 comma 5 times 0 comma 5 which is then r is normally distributed with 16 and 8 so that is now my mu 
over there and that is my sigma squared over there okay then i can apply the continuity correction so it's the probability that r is greater or equal to r small r equals the probability that r is greater than r minus a half because it's in one to upper tail test and so i have it's equal to the probability that r is greater than so r was um, 28 so it's going to be 27,5 remember r was 28 okay then the first thing to do is calculate that z and from z we can get it's r uh, minus a half minus mu over sigma so it's going to be 27 and a half minus mu which was 16 that we calculated before over the square root of 8 and that gives me a value approximately actually 4,07 okay and then the fourth step we can make our decision and because 4,07 is greater than 2,82 therefore I reject H0 okay and then number five I can come to my conclusion given that um, I reject H0 I can say that the fungicide coating is effective so um, coating is effective at 10 percent significance level um, given that I've rejected H0 and then we've come to the end of lecture A26 I plan to video uh, the other lectures as well and I hope you guys find it useful just remember that you are more than welcome to email me um, myself and, and Jacob if you have any questions thank you